Good morning, amazing people. I hope you guys are all doing well. Here is Sika Antonio with another dose of awesomeness. And I hope that you would watch this, you will listen to this, and you would find something truly liberating from what I'm about to say. So I'm very new to social media space, well, newish, because I'm trying to become a big, big voice that is an influencer that people listen to, you know, and take whatever you want to take away from it and go and spice up your life with it and help it to make you a better person. I am learning from, you know, people that are up there too, trying to make me a better person. Now, I wanted to talk today about being unapologetically you, okay? You need to love you so much that you don't care what anybody else has to say about you. You need to be so confident about who you are that who gives a toss? Whether I've got big eyes, a big nose, a flat backside, who cares? This is me because there's never ever going to be another seeker that, that is like me, okay? There is never ever going to be another seeker, Antonio, that is like me. Crazy, broken, mended, whatever you want to say, it is me. It is my life. It is my soul, it is my body, and it's me. Whether you love me or you don't love me, I am still me. And that is it. Take it or leave it. Nobody's shoving Seeker Antonio down your throat. Nobody is saying that you have to love me, but I am just being me. Why am I saying this? Why am I doing this this morning? I am new to this space, and I just want people to know who I am, and make a decision about, you know, whether you like me or not, whether you want to listen to me or not. And that is entirely a decision that you have to make. But if I inspire you, if I motivate you, if I say things that challenge your thoughts process and make you a better person, then by all means, keep on watching. I love you guys. And so I just wanted to be here today and tell you a little bit about myself. And so people get to know, you know, who is this Sika person? Who is she? So my name, Sika Antonio. I am the first daughter of four to my parents that are Ghanaian, Patricia and Jerome. And, you know, they're both professionals. They're, you know, my dad's a retired university lecturer. My mom has been through so many professions, but in her retiring year, she's a, she's a lawyer. Okay, so I'm not going to apologize about that. Okay, my name is Sika Antonio. I'm from the Volta region of Ghana. Okay, my mom's half Togolese, half Ghanaian. My dad is Ghanaian. And so I'm not going to apologize about that either because I'm just me. This is me. God made me in his image and likeness, put me in that family for a purpose. That is me. Love me, don't love me. That is who I am. I am also not going to apologize about the upbringing that I've had. Um, everybody's story is different. I respect everybody. I love everybody, regardless of who you are, where you come from, the tribe or race, that you belong to. I don't care about any of that. Your sexual orientation does not bother me. The color of your skin does not bother me. The language you speak doesn't bother me. I celebrate diversity because in that is a lot of strength. Everybody brings to the table in the school of life something that I go away and it helps me, me to be a better person. My name means gold and so I know that I'm my parents' golden child. If nobody else loves me, if nobody else cares about me, I know there are two people at least whose love I can count on. And those are my parents, Patricia and Gerald. And so I'm unapologetic about who I am. But I also want to say that people shouldn't just look at the outward person that you see. And start um, being envious or whatever it is about me because you don't know anything about me. You don't know what I've been through. You don't know where I've been. You don't know what I've been exposed to. 
You know, I always say this, that we as human beings are a function of the family that we were brought up in, our experiences as our life has progressed, um, the environment in which you've grown up, all of those things makes a difference. And the people that you were exposed to when you were in your formative years. And so for me, my parents were very, very protective of their daughters, especially my father. Oh, yeah, and especially me. Being the first one, they didn't want to make any mistakes when it came to me. And so me, oh, I went through a great, a lot because they wanted to get it right with me so that the others can look at me and be good people. And I think they did a fantastic job because the other ones, <laughs> yeah, yeah, they look at them and they know I, they could have did a good job with me. Okay, because they've got professionals. All four of us are professional people. My background is in civil engineering and urban planning. I have a sister whose background is law. She's a lawyer. Okay, she teaches law. I have another one who's a medic. She's a medical doctor. She heals people. And I have another one who's got a business and now a public health background, and she's doing her thing too. And all of us are uniquely different in our own ways. My parents know who each and every single one of their daughters are, and I'm not going to be apologetic about that neither. I am not going to be apologetic about my schooling or my education or who I am. Some people say, oh dear, oh you're a rabbi, you're a lady. Yes, I am, because my parents taught me to be like that. You know, I've broken free now, I'm a bit crazy sometimes, but you cannot take the ladiness away from a lady. Why am I saying all of these things? I am saying this because in my little short time, that have been in the social media space, I am finding that you have to take a stand, take a position and stick to that position. And so with my chest out, with a smiling face, I present to you Sika Antonio and I do not apologize for that. As I said, I've said a lot about my background and who I am. I speak at least three or four Ghanaian languages very fluently. I learned them. Because I was born in England, I only knew how to speak English even when I was six years old. So every other language that you guys hear me speaking on social media, I made a choice that me, I wanted to learn and be able to speak those languages. There's two more that I want to be able to speak at least a little bit of and I'm working progress on the, those ones. Not because anybody is forcing me to, but I just love to know how to say certain things in certain languages so I can, you know, be able to fit into any, any area. And that is me. Anybody who spent any time trying to know me will tell you that I'm the most humble, humane person that you'd ever meet. And I'm just saying this because I want to big me up, but the people who know me, when I say know me, like know me, know me, right? I have a lot of acquaintances, you know? <laughs> Don't get me started. That is something else I, I, I have to talk about another day. But, you know, we use, I, I find that we Ghanaians and Africans, we use certain terms very loosely. But now I'm learning to be very mindful about how I talk. We call everybody our friend. Oh, that person is my friend. Oh, that person is my friend. But I'm finding that a lot of the people we call or we refer to as friends are actually acquaintances. You call a friend somebody who knows the innermost, innermost of you. That is a friend. And when I, I start to define that and start to think about it very, very seriously, I find that the people that actually can be my friends or are my friends, there are not very many. There's a lot of people that think they know you because they went to school with you. So really, they know the idea of you, what they think is you by what they think they see. They think they know you. Let me give an example. Growing up, my father always dropped me off at school, picked me up and took me home. And because of that, a lot of people said, your pampered, your sports brats, you really? 
just because my father picks me up and drops me home, that makes me a spoiled brat. <laughs> what do you know about me? Nothing. And so because of that, I have found that uh, a lot of people are just acquaintances, people that, you know, by association, they lived in the same area as you. So they think they know you, you know, uh, they, they, they were brought up in the same community as you. So they think they know you, but you know nothing about me. You went there through my struggles and strains and those things. Where were you? You don't know anything about me. And so I'm finding that there's a lot of judgment of me just because I'm being myself. You know, and growing up, up until five years ago, when I had that epiphany and started coming out of my shell and being myself, um, I was trying to fit into what everybody would want me to be very uncomfortable. You know, it's like buying a shoe that you know doesn't fit. It's not your size and fitting your feet into it. I have very broad feet. And so I can't wear just any shoe. It has to fit, right? I was trying so hard to fit my feet into shoes that are not my size. It's either too narrow or it's not just not the right length. It's not the right size. And when I decided that, you know what, this is just too difficult. I'm just going to break free and be me. It's been so liberating. You know, number two, uh, I try to be, you know, what everybody else's idea of a woman should be. Like, uh, I permed my hair. I wanted to try to wear hair extensions and put wigs on and do false eyelashes and all of those things. It is just not me. I hardly ever wear makeup. I wear makeup when I want to wear makeup. But there are some people that would have me polish my face every day and do all of those kind of things. It is just not me. I can't wake up every morning and spend half, half an hour painting my face. And I don't have anything against those who want to do that. I love you. That is you. But just let me be me, please. Can I just be me? Can I do what I think I want to do, please? And so the last five years, I've just broken free. Look, this is all my hair, okay? I'm, Af I'm African, and so my hair gets into, you know, big knots, and it's always very curly because that is the African hair. You might have hair this long. When you wash it, it's that long. That is me, very, very curly, you know? And then when I stretch it out, it becomes like this. But, you know, last week it was a heck of a lot longer than this. And now it's all sh shriveling up because my hair is naturally curly. But this is the look that makes me, she got comfortable right now. And so this is how I want to look. And this is me. Take it or not. You don't have to watch me, you know. If you don't, want, if you don't like what I have or what I represent, just, you know, Go. I'm not forcing you to watch me. You don't have to. But this is me. And I just wanted to introduce the real, the real me to you guys. And then you've got a decision to make. I'm like Marmite. You either love Marmite or you don't. If you don't like Marmite, okay. If you do, eat it. This is Sika. If you like, love, whatever, go ahead and watch. If you don't, then you don't. I am not going to apologize for anything. And that is all that I wanted to say to you guys. Good morning. Good morning. How are you today? Not bad. Sure this is yes. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> Thank you very much. I am not going to apologize for the person that I am. I can't do anything about it. Even if I could, this is who God says I am. Why am I going to change anything? I love me. So guys, be who you are. And don't even be apologetic about, you, about it. My thing is this. Don't hurt anybody. Respect everybody, regardless of their background. Not anybody, everybody has the background that I had. It's not my fault that I had parents that 
decided that they wanted daughters that look like me or were brought up with you know values and, and you know the upbringing that I have why should I apologize for that God in his infinite wisdom decided that Patricia and Jerome have to be my parents ain't nothing I can do about that I love my parents to bits they have made huge sacrifices to make me into the person that you see. All the money that they could have had, just being a couple and not having any children, building all those houses and all those earthly possessions, they didn't do that. They invested everything they worked hard for to make me and my siblings, my younger sisters, who we are. And so for me, I am not apologetic. My parents will never do what I'm doing. They're very private people. I come from a very private family. My family are not outgoing or do in your face things like this. That is them. That is the upbringing I had. And for a very long time, I tried to toe that line and fit into that mold. But right now, I'm almost 40 years old. You know, I have a life of my own to live now. They respect it. You know, they respect me for being me and they love me for me because this is, this is me. I am not going to be anything else. I am Shika and that is it. Born on a Wednesday. So those who really, really know me, some people call me Aku, some people call me Aku Shika, some people, I have so many names. As for the guy names and the pet names, oh my God, where do we begin? My mom christened me Sophia. So some people call me Sophie. Some people call me Sophia. Some people call me Sophia, whatever. But I was christened Sophia after my mom's mom, who sadly I never met, passed away before my time. But this is me. I love Jollof. I love Wache. I love Akbla and Okoro soup. Fatri Dechi. Eh <laughs> with the crab, galan, yes, in there, that is me, from the Volta region, yes, mm -hmm. do you have a problem with that, I'm Ghanaian, okay, yes, that is me, I speak Chi, I speak Fanti, I know a few words in Ghan, and I want to learn Hausa as well, I speak ever fluently, and uh, my mom has a dialect in the Togo people's home, you know, language. I can speak that pretty good too. And so this is me. And I'm not going to apologize about any of that. Because the summation of all of that is, is this. Love it or leave it. And so in essence and in conclusion, all I'm trying to say is that regardless of who you are, whether you had the same background as I did or not, whether you're tall, short, dark, big boned, fat, slim, tall, not tall, have short curly hair or long straight hair, just be you. Know who you are and accept you into the core of your being. Own it, wear it, and be happy and proud of who you are. And don't be apologetic about it because it is who you are. And there is something beautiful and amazing inside of you that God has put there. There is some talent that is there that you have to birth on the surface of this planet so that people can benefit from that. So be unapologetic about who you are. Wear it, own it, love you and do you. I'm doing me. I am doing me. Professional academic, I can be crazy and funny and say things that people would look at me and go, did C could just say that? Yes, I did. Because me, I'm very liberated right now. I don't go according to any rules or norms or whatever that anybody set down. My parents have been good enough to teach me values, knowing between good and bad, wrong and right. And those values, discipline, respect for everybody, being truthful and honest, not lying, not stealing, those values, they've instilled in me since I was a baby crawling. 
So those values are imprinted inside of me. And that's all the training that I need. You know, I love to spend time with people that are 10, 15, 20, 30 years even older than me. All my friends are much older than I am. There's a reason for that. A lot of them have big nuggets of wisdom that I can tap into. My parents are both my best friend, but my mom knows that I have a soft spot for my dad. I love my dad so much and he loves me too. Number one, my dad said something. I don't know whether he knows this himself, but he told me that every human being under the surface of the planet has to have a moral compass, which helps you to navigate and guides you. It's like a, you know, like a, a GPS, a sat nav that you have in your car. In England, we call it TomTom -tom because the company that made it was called TomTom. -tom. You have to have a moral TomTom -tom that helps you to navigate through life. So the moral TomTom -tom that my father and mother have instilled in me, don't steal, don't lie. Be true to yourself. Love everybody. Don't judge anybody. Respect people, no matter who they are. Respect the sweeper, respect the cleaner, respect everybody, regardless of their backgrounds, and be unapologetic about who you are. That is all that I wanted to say today. And so today I welcome you to Seeker, the liberated crazy seeker. I love you guys with the love of the Lord. God bless you. Mwah.